Welcome to another episode of Opinion. On Thursday, I was uh, with a few friends, and uh, these were most of them were journalists. In fact, all of them were journalists, and uh, we were generally talking about uh, politics and what's going to happen and what is what is our what are our views and all of that. So. Uh, a person walked in uh, you know we were sitting in a table uh, a person walked in and uh, one of the journalists nudged me and he said are ye nationalist party mein this guy is in the nationalist party so what he obviously meant to say is that person was from bharatiya janata party but the fact is when he was referred to he was referred to as this person is from a nationalist party my topic is that today that is nationalism about representing a particular party or voting for a particular party or supporting a particular party or representing a particular organization or or being part of the particular organization or supporting that particular organization does that or is that good enough to make you a nationalist is that all you know uh, say vande mataram or uh, say that uh, you are of a particular community or whatever 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 is that all that it takes to be a nationalist you see today nationalism also has a dress code actually if you go to, if you go to see think about it i may be slightly over stretching the fact but all the same all the same nationalists seem to have a dress code with a with a typical whatever uh, dress that they wear the gamchas that they wear the the color that they use the the tikas that they use and all of that so they even seem to have a dress code so nowadays so the point that i am trying to make is if you associate with a particular political ideology a polit- uh, social ideology a cultural ideology and you dress according to that cultural ideology and that makes you nationalist or can we redefine a person who pays his taxes regularly a person who has followed the rules to the t follows the law of the land to the t a person who whenever has the opportunity contributes for the betterment of the country and his fellow countrymen a person who spends that much of his time in the year to ensure that he helps his fellow indians in some form or another some philanthropy or another a person who wants india to see to be seen as an educated country a person who wants to see india or does something to ensure that we are a clean country a person who therefore voices his opinion at times when he sees something is not right for the country if you compare these two people who exactly comes through as nationalist because somewhere down the line currently we see a person with a particular dress and a particular political ideology or a cultural ideology as nationalist and the other person has to prove himself because maybe the other person may not go and shout slogans on the streets or maybe you know not uh, overtly be jingoistic about his his nationalism or his love for his country if you are not then maybe you are not uh, seen as nationalist there are anchors who sit in their tables and shout i am a nationalist i am a nationalist i am a nationalist i am a nationalist and that's good enough that's good enough because then he is looked at as nationalist so it's a it's a it's a very strange thing you see the reason is nationalism is actually a virtue it's actually a something that's that's a that's part of a character isn't it nationalism love for your country patriotism is a, is your character is what you made of it is what we were all proud of as indian because most of us uh, in india <coughs> i should say are patriotic people i have hardly ever met a person very few people in my life who are who are not patriotic 
we were all patriotic. Ha, but our patriotism doesn't maybe always includes paying our taxes on time or, or doing our duties as a citizen. Wo sab theek hai, wo sab we compromise, but predominantly we are a patriotic lot. Now, here the point is somewhere down the line, now shouting out, coming and doing dharna, coming and doing all these jingoisms, that is now seen as patriotism. What of it? If that is the case. You know why I am talking about this and kyun apne ko kya hai? You know how does it affect us? See the problem is that uh, when nationalism is used as a tool and if you don't behave the way the nationalist, the so called nationalist forces you to behave, then you become an anti-national. So what you are trying to do or what you are trying to work is basically you are using nationalism to draw people into a particular ideology, into a particular cultural or a political ideology. Okay? You are agreed to, you will agree to me till here? Fair enough. So therefore you are telling a person you are either with me, then you are nationalist Baba. You are not with me, then you are anti-national. You are against the country. Fair enough. Chalo. That is a marketing stunt. A lot of marketing people use it. Thanda matlab Coca-Cola. What was that? So anything cold is Coca-Cola. Correct? So you are, it's, it, the brand is referencing itself to something which is cold. So cold drink means Coca-Cola. Nationalism means a particular political party, particular political ideology. Marketing funda, everything the same. Okay. Now where is the problem? And why are we discussing it tonight? You see, the problem is that then one fears to say anything against that particular political party. It will come to a stage if this grows and the way it's growing, if this grows, a person will be intimidated to speak anything against that political party or that ideology. Because if you say something, all you know, tomorrow they will come and arrest you. Tomorrow they will pick you up saying that you are anti-national. Tomorrow they will pick you up saying that you are into, into propaganda. I don't know. They will pick you up. You are scared. You are intimidated. So what happens? After a certain time you say, Remarne do yaar. Kyu bolnega? Like somebody says, Aap bhagwan ho. Aap avtar ho. That's okay. Why should we take panga baba? Hamara bhi, we also have families, don't we? We have people sitting at home. Why should I take any risk in my life? So no. Whatever you say is right. What, what does that do to our country? What does that do to our country? That makes us a country with a single ideology and possibly a single political party. We become a one party nation. For the next 300 years, you will have one party ruling this particular nation. So all the democracy, all the freedom, all the freedom is my birthright, which we so strongly cherish and so strongly tell. Swaraj, ye mera birthright hai, ye mera haq hai. We say this. You know, the actual word is Swaraj. Ha, maza janma siddha adhikara hai. It is my birthright, freedom. All gone. All gone down with the wind. Because you, when you have one party, you normally have one person ruling that one party and that one person ruling that one country. I am not talking about currently. I am not. Even after 200 years, if you have one party, there will be that one person who is ruling it. The process will continue. The person may change after 50 years or 60 years of that rule. The next king will come. After that, next king will come. After that, next king will come. But there will be one person ruling. Or maybe one or two group ruling the entire party. This is what we fought against. And we called ourselves the world's largest democracy. Now we still will be the world's largest democracy with but only with one party. So this is what I was trying to talk about. This is what this loosely held notion of nationalism will do to our country. This is what if nationalism 
is not used as not seen as a virtue, a character, but it is seen as a tool. This is what is going to happen to our country. This is the point I wanted to make today. That's my opinion. Till I see you next time, that is next Sunday at 9 o'clock.